Okay, how to be Geo Hypostasis. So we're going to be using uh, an Amo Traveler here because Geo Traveler will not do good damage because Geo Hypostasis is immune to Geo. Remember that, okay? So here's my gear. Uh, it's really bad. Uh, I do have this five star artifact. It rolled all into HP. Um, I'm world level five, which means we're going to be fighting a level 72 Geo Hypostasis. My Anemo Traveler is level 66, my Noel is level 50, I am missing a piece of gear on this, I'm using a level 50 weapon, here's my constellations, none of these are mandatory. Anyways, we're using Noel because you need a Claymore unit, or Klee, to be able to do damage to the pillars, right? So uh, we're going to be doing some pillar management this entire fight, that's all we use Noel for. We have Shangling and Amber for the double pyro bonus, which means that we get 25% extra damage as a flat bonus. Okay. Anyways, let's get into the fight. Okay, so we've got Geo Hypostasis here. This boss is really easy, but the name of the game is Pillar Management. So it'll always start the fight by summoning four pillars, three in a triangular formation and one in the center. Okay. All you need to do is just look at that. See? All you need to do is just hit the pillars and only hit them until they have one hit left, right? So just leave them at one HP. He's going to go ahead and teleport here. What he's going to do, he's going to channel on top of the pillar and release this big AoE. All you need to do is just make sure you leave early and dash far, okay? So up next, I think he's going to go ahead and mark us. Yeah, here we go. So once he marks us, right, watch for it to glow and then just dash out of it. You'll completely avoid the move. Anyways, we're going to leave that pillar at 1 HP because if we kill a pillar that he's on top of, we actually get a free damage phase gonna go ahead and shoot stone bullets at us. These stone bullets will help deal damage to the pillars, so you just need to measure your attacks to make sure you don't accidentally break it. I think he's gonna do the uh, earthquake next. Yep, okay, so once you see that golden cube spawn, look at that right here, I'll go closer. Once you see that golden cube spawn, he's guaranteed to do this channeling earthquake attack. What it'll do, he'll channel into the pillar and every single pillar will start to emit giant like shockwaves. If you're near the pillar that he's channeling, it'll spawn that golden cube, right? If you break the golden cube, you have to stop and use like a, like a claymore unit. It'll create this barrier that will protect you from the shockwaves. Anyways, as you can see here, we break the pillar that he's on, we get a free damage phase no matter what. So all we're gonna do here, we're just gonna do some DPS. And then, we're going to go ahead and move near a pillar to try to bait him to come near us. There we go. He's going to go ahead and chow on top of it. As you can see, now you can see why we left the pillars at 1 HP. Because it just means that we get more back-to-back -back damage phases the more he's on top of pillars. Occasionally, he won't always go to you, right? He won't always pick the pillar that you're near. But most of the time he will, which is why you always want to be standing near a low, uh, low HP pillar at pretty much all the time. Got a little bit of okay damage there. Come here. Okay, so this is going to be his um, rock rain sort of deal. He's going to go ahead and put down like little portals that will continuously rain down rocks where pillars used to be. Well, where they are or used to be which will make it pretty difficult for you to do damage to pillars while this thing is up. If you get the rain while he's channeling uh, his earthquakes, you may get it, things may get a little bit messy. So just be careful to make sure that you know exactly where all the pillars are and where, where they were, most importantly. As you can see, we bring Amber because, you know, you can still deal damage to him after he does a move, but it's better if we go ahead and break the pillars to, do, to get an even longer damage phase. A little bit more DPS here. Oh, we've got one more pillar. Come here. Here we are. Okay, so now that all the pillars are down, his moves will change. So it used to be that he'll do he would do this hammer attack no matter what, but now he will only do the hammer attack when there's no pillars left. So right after this, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure he's gonna use hammer attack. Three, two, one. Here it is. Okay, so this hammer attack has this big circular AoE and it'll shoot those three linear waves out, right? All you need to do is just go behind him like I did, no problem. And he becomes free to damage right afterwards. He's always vulnerable, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Just keep in mind that he's open to have the, this move after you break all the pillars. He can still do all of his other moves regardless. So as you can see here, 
Um, he went ahead and did that channeling thing on me. We're just going to do damage afterwards. After each one of those moves, he doesn't have too long of a damage phase, which is always why we want to be breaking the pillars that he's, he's on top of. For the stone bolts, you don't ne you don't need cover. You can just walk. So among moves that the Kyo hypostasis will have without any pillars, uh, every single hypostasis has this clap move that we should be seeing here soon, right? Okay, this will also give us our final phase. So, final phase, he'll summon three pillars. This time, we always want to be breaking the pillars. Always break all three, right? If you don't break all three, it's not a big deal. Any pillars that you do break will stay dead, but he will heal according to the amount of pillars that he has left. So, we're going to go ahead and get all here. But, just keep that in mind. Anyways, it's easy. 